So I finally passed the uh, thousand subscriber threshold. I thank you for that. Um, YouTube recently decided that channels need to have at least a thousand subscribers in order to monetize, which is to uh, show ads. Not that I make any real money off these ads, but uh, if I earn a little bit of income, I can at least justify deducting the expenses for the upcoming Greenhouse 2.0 uh, for my taxes. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, now that it's March 2018, I figured I should take a look back at the, at the uh, successes and failures of the uh, greenhouse over the winter, and there were both, um, before I start planning for the uh, uh, spring planting rush. Last winter, I planted cool weather crops in late September and had excellent luck through uh, January. <clears throat> the cold never actually killed the crops, but they did go dormant, so I harvested everything in uh, late January. To heat the greenhouse, I utilized a uh, vertical geothermal GAT system, or a ground air heat transfer system, combined with a prototype of my greenhouse compost heating system. Here's a cartoon view of last year's greenhouse. This winter, I had a far more ambitious goal. In late September, when our growing season here in Colorado ends, I had eight healthy tomato plants growing inside my greenhouse, uh, which you can see at the, at the left side. Uh, I had the windows removed for summer. I was strongly motivated to keep these plants alive as long as possible. So uh, this year I actually improved the insulation in the greenhouse and tried to seal up all the sources of uh, cold air invasion. I also re-engineered my compost heating system. Uh, unfortunately, for logistical reasons, I had to remove the geothermal system, so I was totally reliant on the compost heating and the improvements to the greenhouse. And here you can see the compost chamber on the left-hand side, and then uh, the heat exchanger, which is just a um, drainage pipe run from the greenhouse under the compost and back into the greenhouse and circulated with fans. <clears throat> the greenhouse performed excellently as a season extender. So here's a graph of the daily low temperatures from October 1st until December 7th. Uh, which is the day that the tomato plants uh, died. The red dashed line shows the freezing point of water, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. After the first freeze on October 7th, at least half of the days went below freezing. It wasn't until the temperature went below 15 degrees Fahrenheit or about uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius that the compost heater just couldn't keep up with the cold. We probably harvested 20 pounds or uh, 10 kilos of tomatoes after the first freeze. We were even seeing new fruit production well into November, which is uh, unseasonably warm here. Here's a photo of our last tomato harvest on December 5th. The greenhouse extended the season for a full two months, which is, which is pretty impressive. If we could have kept the tomatoes alive uh, until December 8th, it's likely that we could have gone until December 24th when the outside temperature finally went below uh, zero Fahrenheit or about minus 18 degrees uh, Celsius. At the end of the day, all that matters is the difference between the outside temperature and the greenhouse temperature. So here we plot the outside temperature versus the greenhouse minus the outside temperature. So the red triangle shows where plants die. So if the outside temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit, then the greenhouse needs to be 22 degrees warmer to stay above the freezing point. So as you can see, we only had a couple of days where the greenhouse temperature was in the triangle of death. Unfortunately, all, uh, one night is all that it takes. So this graph plots the temperature of the compost pile as time progresses. The compost was a simple mixture of dry leaves and coffee grounds, and of course, uh, water. The compost temperature follows a very predictable pattern. On day 22, I built a uh, new pile. Within three days, the pile achieved its maximum temperature of about 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, the temperature declines pretty rapidly. If my compost pile was larger, or perhaps if I used a different mixture, I could keep the pile hotter for longer. By day 32, the temperature had fallen below 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 40 degrees Celsius, and that's time uh, to change the pile. Unfortunately, just as the, as the compost pile was cooling down, we had our first really nasty cold spell here in uh, Denver. Rather than put in a new compost pile altogether, I made the decision to simply turn the existing pile. That may have been a bad decision. You can see that it heated up a little bit, but it didn't get anywhere close to 140 degrees in time for the coldest weather. In a sense, my tomatoes were a victim of bad luck. If I would have had hotter compost, I could have kept them alive uh, for another three weeks pretty easily. Returning to the triangle of death graph, 
Uh, I've expanded the triangle of death to, uh, to lower temperatures. I've also drawn a purple curve, which I call the peak theoretical performance. In other words, if my compost pile was always at its peak temperature, then this is the maximum heating that I could, that I could achieve. If I can improve the insulation of the greenhouse or increase the volume of the compost pile, then it's very possible that I could keep the greenhouse temperature above freezing all winter long. So in summary, um, the greenhouse performed pretty well. I had a very high bar because I was trying to keep a warm weather crop, which is tomatoes, uh, going through a very cold winter. Uh, I managed to extend the uh, growing season about uh, two and a half months into December. Usually uh, we get the first killing frost in late September, early October. Um, definitely could have made some improvements to the system. I think uh, I really, I need more compost heating or I need to rebuild the greenhouse and make it better. So I do have, actually have plans to build uh, a new greenhouse. Uh, I'm kind of constrained in the current uh, configuration of the greenhouse by space and just logistics. So I'm gonna build a bigger structure that's going to be more uh, uh, engineered for purpose of keeping stuff warmer. Um, I think it's very achievable with the system that I have here, just with better compost and better greenhouse insulation uh, to get uh, something that, lad that keeps some plants alive through the entire winter here in Colorado. Uh, I also plan to use the, uh, the geothermal Earth, earth heating system or the GAT system, ground air uh, heat transfer system. I, I'm a big believer in those, especially for, for warming and for cooling. So look out for that in, in Greenhouse 2.0. So until uh, next time, um, hope you enjoyed that video and, and please hit uh, like and especially subscribe if you want to uh, hear more. Thanks.